station. Listen online at KFMA.com. You want it? You got it. Reality Radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios, it's Beef Vegan Presents. Yo, welcome back to the show. It's Beef Vegan Presents live on Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Stream worldwide at KFMA.com on this beautiful Friday, August 4th. Good morning, weirdo. <laughs> Did you just almost throw it back to April? No, nah, no. Nah, <laughs> sometimes when I pronounce August, I do it with a hard A. So it's Agus. Agus. Yes. yes. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. And happy Friday to everybody. You guys made it all the way to the weekend. So, you know, I hope you have a lot of indoor plans in store because it's going to be hot as F outside. Mm-hmm. And as we continue that all over again, keep on swimming, Tucson. Uh, we got a great show lined up for you, though. Herb Shafford's going to be in a little bit later on. A lot of stuff to get to. Uh, interesting facts and, and a lot of fun and uh, we're canceling Lizzo together. That's going to oh. be fun. Yeah. 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 That continues to go. I mean, it, it reminds me, I almost wanted to call someone else in the building Lizzo here. <laughs> <laughs> I know who. Uh, I know you do. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and we have tickets to give away. And of course the signature heating and cooling a summer, a fun song of the day that I'm going to do. See, I nailed that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're going to have a good day yeah. uh, lined up. You know, uh, but it's so hot across the country that experts are now warning people to stay away from foaming watermelons. Foaming watermelons. Foaming watermelons. You think this sounds like some kind of lube? It is not. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, this is a real, uh, real thing that's starting to happen. And it's a phenomenon in a, in a way, but it's also very dangerous. It could be deadly if you get hit by an exploding watermelon. Okay. Now, who's chucking watermelons? Well, I, I got a little video you'll see on the podcast broadcast of one of these uh, watermelons starting to foam. But uh, this is something that is legitimately happening, and watermelons can combust uh, and due to like extreme heat. And right. I didn't know this, and, but at the same time, when they're saying watermelons exploding could be deadly, uh, I'm a little skeptical because I'm like, I don't know, man. I grew up in the 80s. And there was this comedian named Gallagher. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Gallagher never killed anybody. Right. <laughs> and then his, like, twin brother who took over the shtick after Gallagher retired, he never killed anybody. Right. Not with an exploding watermelon anyways. Maybe, like, hitting someone over the head with a mallet. And, and that hasn't been solved yet. But, you know, <laughs> just anyone that's been to a Gallagher show has never died from a watermelon. Uh, hitting them in the face. But, um, you know, the, they say this, this, these are the facts. The heat can cause the fruit inside to ferment, which is awesome. That turns into alcohol, right? Right. And when that happens, you see frothy foam bubbling out of the watermelon. And they say it's complicated. It's basically a combination of bacteria. That's the, the fruit's natural sugars mm. and the above average temperatures. Now, both where they grow and where they're being stored. Now, uh, as they say that it may sound like fermenting watermelon could be a fun thing, you know, because it's alcoholic and you're like, Oh yeah. Hell yeah. That's like watermelon vodka. Yeah. Uh, they say it's actually dangerous and should never be. This okay. is how it could kill you. Oh, see? oh okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's Instead not by of... projectiles. It is by, I don't know, poison. <laughs> that's the kind of idiot I am. Immediately, <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, you get a little watermelon in the face. What's the big deal. No, you shouldn't eat that fermented watermelon. Mm. Uh, so the uh, fermenting watermelon is the ideal environment for toxic pathogens, including a botulism, E. coli, salmonella. So now we're living in a world where we got to be afraid about eating watermelon, <laughs> you God. know? Uh, so be careful where you stare, store your watermelon. And if you see it kind of foaming and leaking out a little bit, then don't eat that yeah. because essentially it's uh, like a ball of poison. Mm. Uh, uh, and they say that if enough gas is kind of produced in the process, it can cause the watermelon to explode. Uh, so to avoid this risk of fermentation, experts say that you could keep watermelons in a fridge once you bring them home, right? Mm. Which I guess that's good. That's oh my God, uh, what would it smell like once uh, it exploded? It'd probably smell awful. Yeah, maybe. I mean, and you would be a mess. It would be dripping from your chin. I mean, it'd be uh, crazy. Mm. Yeah. Uh huh. I know. All right. <laughs> Here, I'm going to show you. Just you'll be able to see this on the podcast broadcast later, um, if the internet agrees with me. But uh, essentially, you'll see it just kind of leak out the tip uh, a little bit. And I'm not really? trying to be sexual. I'm not trying to be sexual, <laughs> weirdo. Right? You're not. No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you see it if it if your watermelon is bubbling. 
don't eat it. Mm. Yeah. We learn something new each and every day. And that's kind of the goal of right. the show. So uh, we'll have more fun facts on this Friday, even break down some science news for you. Uh, have a little F my life, maybe a confession session. It's going to be a fun one. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to be real with you. Show open today, not the strongest. Yeah. When we talk about <laughs> exploding watermelons and poisonous watermelons, maybe that is a little fear mongering. Maybe that is, uh, you know, whatever. I was, again, uh, not every show open is going to be a 10 out of 10. Uh, welcome, Herb Stratford. Yo. Yes. All right. We're going to be live on the air here in about 15 seconds. We start this podcast broadcast. Shout out to everyone who's commented before. And yes, happy birthday, Jeff. Mm -hmm. we, you do have your single song takeover requests in, and we're definitely going to play that. So that's going to be fun. We have a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing on the podcast. Valdez will join us in a little bit. We're going to uh, do a fun little game and stunt with this new crazy soda that he's got. Mm -hmm. Like enchilada soda. You ever had an enchilada soda? Yeah. Yeah, neither have I. No. Yeah. yeah, so Valdez, okay, he goes to Ace Hardware, and he sees this lady selling these obscure, random, odd flavors of soda. And he buys them all. <laughs> buys them all. Yeah. <laughs> buys them all, brings them in, and we're going to try them all. I'm actually uh, intrigued about this enchilada soda because if it is good – then, like, this weekend, I'm going to get some enchiladas and drink an enchilada soda with my enchiladas. <laughs> is, is that gluttonous? I don't know. And then he's going to kill over and have a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's diet enchilada soda there, weirdo. Uh, we're, okay. we're hanging out here with Herb Stratford here on the podcast broadcast, live on Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Good morning. Welcome back again, Herb. Thank you. Uh, let's get right into this uh, top release here, because in honor of Shark Week, there's another big sequel that's hitting, uh, is it theaters and streaming services? Uh, you know, it's just theaters. It's just theaters. Okay, well, look oh, yeah. at that. that and, you know, and, and, you know, the the precursor, we got we to say this really clearly, though. Uh, there's two months every year that are considered the dump months. Oh, okay. 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 So that is January and August. And what I mean by dump months is the months when studios are like, hmm, what are we going to do with this? Right. <laughs> right. And they put it out. So the other thing about this is now we're two weeks into Barbie and Oppenheimer, right? So yes. now they're like, okay, now the now yeah, for the most part, those have you know done their big business. So there's going to be some openings where theaters had like Barbie on like 12 out of 18 screens, right? Now yeah. they're like, we're gonna we're gonna diversify a little bit. So so yeah, so you've got some stuff. You had a busy schedule this weekend, but the number one film is Meg to the Trench. Okay. The Meg is back. Yeah. 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 Megier than ever. <laughs> and if you remember the first one, right, with Jason Statham, very tongue-in-cheek, very sort of summer movie film with, you know, giant prehistoric shark, you know, and, you know, a little bit goofy, right? You know, right. I mean, a summer movie. And, and I mean, well done from a perspective of effects, right? It didn't, it didn't feel cheesy. They spent some money. Uh, and they had a good cast, but it was like, it was, you know, it was a summer movie. Right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's not Oppenheimer. Right. Right. Uh, so everyone was like, we got it. And I think it, I think it surprised a lot of people when it came out because it was like, oh, everybody likes this. Cause everybody, everybody loves Jason Statham. I mean, the guy's, he's, he's nutty. Right? Yeah. Super charismatic for sure. But okay. And, and yeah, the, the special effects was nice on this. I didn't know that was such a, a hit where they would do it again. So this second time around, did they bring back all sarcastic? Did they spend the right money? They did. And, and, you know, Statham's in it again. And, you know, okay. he's, you know, firmly, you know, sort of chewing the scenery as, as, you know, as he does, you know, doing ridiculous stunts and stuff. But the premise here is, there is an undersea world, which we've seen so many times in all these movies. Like, oh, look, there's a prehistoric world that's, you know, hidden and sealed off at the bottom of the ocean. Uh -huh. And so a bunch of Megs, not just one, a bunch, get mm. out along with other stuff and, of course, terrorize, you know. And, and there's, you know, the, 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 you've seen the trailer. So there's all kinds of goofy stuff like, you know, people in paddle boats trying to get away from a shark. And, you know, <laughs> it's not going to happen, right? <laughs> so... I will say that it's 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 getting hated on. It's twenty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes, Woo! Um, and yeah. I think I think people are taking it too seriously. I mean, I think this is just a goofy, fun summer movie. You know, get out of the heat, go watch something, eat some popcorn. You know, I mean, yes, movies are expensive. You know, it's like getting close to twenty bucks. But I mean, you know, like you're not you don't have a screen that big at your house. Yeah, right? <laughs> no. Right? I mean, there's always the matinees too. Matinees yeah, are totally. less than ten bucks. Yeah, 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 I yeah, do. yeah. Well, a lot of people have jobs there, weirdo. But uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Yeah. Mine just ends at ten. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, I do enjoy the the campy films. And and again, if there is a, a time of year to watch a movie about an oversized shark, it's during Shark Week. Yeah, uh, because you know they they even have like great white versus the Meg like series on Shark Week. I know this because of Max um, and Discovery because they <laughs> absorbed a Discovery. Yes. Um, and, you know, 
So yeah, if, if the critics aren't enjoying it, they I, I think you're right. I think they're taking it way too seriously. Yep. yep. Yeah. And I, and I think you know it's like you're not going in expecting high you know high uh, Academy Award stuff here. Right. This is this is fun, and you know it's also something. Frankly, you can see with the family. Yeah. Right? You know mm. what I mean? Because you're not going to have a bunch of shark sex. So, yeah. <laughs> and, it's not, and, and you know, and also it's not over the top like Sharknado, right? Or mm. like the, you know, like the Velocipaster. You know what I mean? We're not yeah. Things, yeah. The, the Velocipaster? Oh, you haven't seen that? No. Oh, yeah, we got, well, <laughs> I had two takeaways real quick and we'll keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. Uh, one, I think it's odd and funny that they're bringing out, it's like the Megan family, the whole family you got to mm -hmm. look out for. I think that's it's somewhat ridiculous and also the meg being the largest shark ever on record going against uh, probably uh beyond besides tom cruise the shortest in stature action <laughs> hero star of all time you know well and, then, and meg three is going to be the meg versus the orca right probably yeah, yeah. is it possible <laughs> yeah. that the meg isn't really a giant shark but really just a small target tiger shark but next to jason <laughs> <T> Statham, <laughs> looks like a blue whale i don't know we'll see all right keep the conversation moving youtube.com slash beef vegan be back with your tmi top five and more right after this it's rock one 2.1 yeah so um and there was a couple things Let's see Hold on. Uh, Jeff said, thank you, Turner 41. I'm going to watch SummerSlam and have a chill day. Yeah, that's oh, going to yeah, be a good that one. that is this weekend. That is Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yesterday it was trending on Twitter, um, WWE women deserve better. Uh, mm. And that is because SummerSlam put this stacked, like, four-hour lineup together and not a single women's match is there. They mm. dropped Becky Lynch and Trish Stratish. Trish Stratus, which they've been building for months. Building for months to have a SummerSlam match. And the reason why they can't uh, they said they don't have time because they have to do a shitty ass of uh, like <laughs> like um not a royal rumble battle royal shitty ass a uh, battle royal and a kid rock segment oh are you kidding yeah, me i oh. swear to you that, and that's a hundred percent vince mcmahon hundred percent vince vince mcmahon just love because chris rock or, or kid rock uh, you know obviously you know what his politics are mm -hmm. uh, that aligns with vince mcmahon mm -hmm. and they're just basically doing that as a little circle jerk favor S super odd um and then with that of course you know they they drop those matches and it's ridiculous and this week uh, not coincidentally uh not only did uh, Vince McMahon green like a kid rock to be on SummerSlam, but he also got raided with search warrants by mm -hmm. the FBI on a federal subpoena. Yeah, so, my husband and I were talking about this yesterday. And it, I mean, it's more continuing about the whole sexual harassment, sexual assault, you know, the hush money for the women. But yeah, it's 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 getting it's diving a lot deeper. And he went in for spinal surgery. Yeah, major yeah. spinal surgery, apparently. But yeah, yeah, I mean, isn't that odd where, you know, if you're being investigated federally, for uh, sexual misconduct, uh, and then also take every single woman off of your card right. and do an all male <laughs> card. I mean, I know that's coincidental, but it's still odd at the same time. But like, hey, at least you could showcase that you are an ally to women instead, you know, or pretend at least. Right. Yeah. I mean, and they've been building some really good, you know, matches up for like uh, Rhea with uh, Natalia, right? Yeah, no, and some of like it's it's been really interesting to to be following along on social media, and then they just don't do any of it. No, they don't God. do any of it. Yeah, and it's bullshit. Not even on a pre-show. Uh, but yeah, some of their biggest stars are female stars, and you know they're not. They're not doing it. So right now, uh, social media is kind of revolting against that idea. Hopefully something changes by the time SummerSlam comes around and they squeeze in a match. Give us a match. But, yeah, they mm -hmm. moved uh, Becky and Trish to, like, Raw two weeks after SummerSlam. So that's like releasing Meg, in, uh, Meg 2 in August, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of the Barbieheimer, right? Uh -huh. uh, did you see that, uh, you know, like Japan – uh, and, and people in Japan are, are really upset by the Barbie Heimer memes. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's it, it's interesting because it was like the official, like it was some official connection, right? It was like the Warner Brothers account in Japan or something that was pushing, that was pushing that, that, uh, that graphic out. And so they had to apologize. So for people who don't know what we're talking about, sort of the mashup of Barbie and Oppenheimer. So you have like a nuclear explosion, but you have like Barbie driving through it in a car or something. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. And you know, it's like, everybody's like, Oh, Barbie and Heimer, you know, we're going to see them both, which is a bad idea, by the way, to see both of these. Cause right. you know, it's, that's a lot right. uh, at the same day, at least. And, 
and they were like, you know, uh, hello, um, how many hundred thousand people were killed by the bomb in Japan? Like, let's just separate those two. Right. You know, yeah. like too soon. You know, I mean, Oppenheimer. Yeah, too soon. <laughs> Oppenheimer definitely, I think, has an audience in Japan, right? Because I think it's it's it, you know, but it's just like let's not make fun of the fact that you know that a hundred. 250,000 people died or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And and make it all cute and bubbly uh, yeah. with that. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, they they had to put out a formal apology and uh and rightfully so. Uh and, and it's odd and I really think is are both these movies are they Warner Brother movies? Um so That's what I want to look at because I've been having this theory for a couple weeks that this whole Barbieheimer movement is uh, some brilliant uh advertising campaign from somewhere so like someone's making money off this or somewhere in a room they're like you know it would be a great idea if we tried to pitch this and how absurd is this but it just might work and then sure enough it became like a trend where people were like i'm gonna go to see two movies at once well i haven't been seeing movies in movie theaters for about three years <laughs> yeah. right um i don't i don't think they're both the same studio but i could be wrong um, there's somebody there's got to be some sort of attachment but i do believe yeah. that somebody really made a mint off of creating this kind of ad campaign and viral trend movement. Yeah, there's got to be somebody who's got their hand in it that's connected to both. Like yeah. you said, like like PR or something. It yeah. smells Even like it marketing. Was a backroom deal. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Somebody was like, yeah. They, I mean, I remember when they announced when they announced that they were both opening on the same weekend, and people were like, that's either brilliant or stupid. And it turned out to be brilliant yep. because they both are doing so well. Barbie's going to top a billion globally. I mean, that's amazing. And Oppenheimer is going to be uh, Nolan's biggest film. So, I mean, that's amazing. Really? Yeah. In like, terms of box office. Yep. Really? Yep. The what? Yep. Batman's? Yep. It's beating all Batman's. It, by the time it's done, it will. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about that, man. That sounds absurd. Well, I'm telling you, you know, it's because ticket prices are higher and so much, so much of their uh, screenings are in IMAX. Okay. Mm. And that's a big so like we're saying twenty five percent of the box office now for some of these big films is in IMAX. Well, okay, that makes sense because you want to make it an experience and something you can't get at home. But with that, you know, Oppenheimer did not beat Barbie and still has not beat Barbie in any single weekend. Uh, no. And that's because, first off, it's rated R and it's longer, so it's less screenings. Um, but so to see that not even be able to beat Barbie, uh beat the Batman trilogy, like well, come tr on. trilogy one offs, right? I mean, you're talking all together. No, I'm not. No, all I three, know. But even but... like Dark Knight or, you know, Dark Knight Rises. Right, those... well, let, let me let me do my research. OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. so say then, all then, right. then, then what was I'm we... offended at that? statement. <laughs> so then what do we compare it to? Because like you said, uh, ticket price is going up. So now what's going to be the marker of comparing something that came out 10 years ago to now? Is it just going to be it sold this many tickets versus making this much yeah. money? Like, well, so, for example, uh, Gone with the Wind is still like the number one film ever yes right but, adjusted but, you know, to inflation yeah exactly okay. exactly so you know like it made 17 dollars in the box office <laughs> adjusted to the day's inflation it's 1.7 billion <laughs> yeah. well you know i mean you're, you talk about the people that i mean that was like the original titanic people went back and saw it again and again mm -hmm. and again and it was like 25 cents or something yeah. right. <laughs> right right so you know uh but no let me let me go i'm gonna do my research i'll come back with numbers please. okay oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, only because and again i'm not angry I at you. you i, I just you. it just doesn't make sense to me and yeah. i haven't seen that anywhere either um um, I know that it's still wildly successful in a year of movies that have been wi wildly underwhelming. Um, well, so and like Barbie is the is the highest grossing female directed movie, right? It was like mm -hmm. it's like the this weekend, that weekend, that opening weekend was like the 12th biggest weekend ever or something because you don't usually have two films open at over 100 million, right? Usually it's one and then everybody else picks up the scraps, but there was two spe specific audiences that they got right which yeah. wouldn't necessarily overlap so yeah i'll come back i'll have a whole let's let's do that next well week. Right. i mean uh anthony just sent me a link actually uh so barbie smashes the dark knight's 15 year old box office record uh this is according to the independent all right um so uh let's see bu -bu boom nolan's last film oppenheimer uh with the two films joined bu -bu 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 -bu. I wonder uh, how many couples went to the movies together, but then, what, and then walked <laughs> in two different theaters. You know, it's interesting. I was, because uh, I was in New York for this the film festival I was doing, and uh, so some of our screenings were at a, at a Regal, right, a multiplex, mm -hmm. and yeah. they had like 20 screens, and so like, at least 12 of them were showing Barbie. And it was interesting because at one point we were setting up a red carpet and a step and repeat in the lobby, and just watching the people come in. Mm. And just watching all the girls all in pink. Yeah. Right. And then you could totally tell, I mean, where they were going. But then it was interesting to see 
where everybody else was going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I mean, you know, you can, you can tell they're still, uh, they're still, they're still doing, you know, the robust business, but certainly you're not dressing up to go to Oppenheimer. Right, exactly. Yeah. You showed up in fedoras and three-piece suits. <laughs> it's fine. And you mentioned about, like, Titanic and how many people went and saw it multiple times. When was the last time that, like, a, a movie was known for that? Of, like, we're going to, I saw this, I got to go see it another three times in yeah. theaters and pay the money. Like, we don't really see that no, anymore. No, we, we don't. And I think, you know, part of that, too, was, like, I mean, Cameron's no dummy. He basically did Romeo and Juliet on a boat, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he knew he was going to, and he cast, you know, uh, the the guy, Leonardo, that yeah. every girl had a crush on and had a poster already in mm -hmm. her bedroom. Yep. So, I mean, that that kind of, that perfect storm, yeah, you know, not going to happen again. Also, because to your point, weirdo, everybody's just like, oh, I'm just going to hang out. It'll be out soon. Right. I think the last <laughs> time that I went and saw a movie multiple times in theaters was Matrix. Okay. Yeah. So, right. for, and I do know a few other people like from my millennial generation that it was like, that was just so mind bending. That was like, I do, I can't wait for this to come out on VHS in yeah. know, nine and, months. Yeah. And you wanted to go because you knew there was more there. Mm -hmm. You're like, I know I missed something. That's a good question. I, I, I know that my record of seeing a movie in theaters uh, is Wayne's World. I've seen that. Oh. I watched that in movie theaters probably 15 times. Mm. Uh, nice. Yeah. I saw it in regular movie theaters and then I had a dollar cinema right by me. Uh, and I would do that on a regular. So, um, oh, I miss cheapy theaters. Yeah, yeah, I, right. I can't recall the last movie that I went to go see in a theater twice. Um, uh, but I want to. I think that's a good a good question. Uh, you know, but yeah, like a lot of these movies, like Super Mario Bros. Uh, uh, even Guardians of the Galaxy three, which I enjoy the franchise. You know, I'm a big right. fan of that yeah. franchise. I could have seen that again, but I just knew that it was going to come out on the streaming services soon enough. Right. So why bother? Uh, and that's that, sort of Super Mario. I was like, yeah, you know, and Spider-Man. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to see those here soon enough. So I'm going right. I'm to say for me, it was probably um, when the the maybe the the uh, the Star Wars prequel trilogy came out. OK, OK. You know what I mean? Just because there was such a build up to that first film. Yeah. You know, uh, and you were just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Yeah. And and then you knew it wasn't going to come out for a long time. Right. My, yeah. my brother, I would say episode one, he probably we we yeah. went to the midnight release, the you mm -hmm. know pre-release for all those. But I would say that one. I know he went and saw at least three or four times yeah. by himself. Yeah. Yeah. He really. That's a nerd. That. Nah. I know. He, he was a huge nerd. <laughs> and speaking of nerd, look who walked in. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Uh, so yeah, Valdez is going to be busting out these sodas here oh, in a little sorry. bit oh, as well. I'm so excited for this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like I said, I was saying just a minute ago, like if that enchilada soda is good, then I'm going to eat enchiladas and drink that enchilada soda like this weekend. Uh, that's how excited I am about that. Smirnoff makes a tamarindo vodka. I kind of want to mix those two and see what happens. You say it too nicely for me <laughs> to understand what you mean. <laughs> what, what kind of so Smirnoff does do they make? So it's a spicy tamarindo. It tastes like, you know, the candy tamarindo? No. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, gringo. Sorry. Yeah, a bunch of gringos in the room. But, sorry. Uh, super good. Smirnoff makes that? Yeah, it's okay. really nice. You could even, uh, like, I'll make a michelada and I'll put a shot of that in there. Hmm. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. All right. Well, we're going to get to the taste test of these sodas and showcase these sodas after we uh, break down the rest of these reviews. And we're on the air here about 15 seconds. Uh, plus, we're going to do a weirdo single song takeover and a special birthday request going out to Jeff. That's coming up on the FM side because that helmet unsung is going to be played played after these commercials. But let's get on the air here. Rock one, 2.1 KFMA, Disturb a Bad Man. Uh, welcome back to the show. It's a podcast broadcast. We're live here at youtube.com slash beefvegan or on our Facebook pages if you want to join along in the conversation and be a part of the show valdez in studio good morning valdez say it i'm valdez yeah. <laughs> i heard we talked about meg too uh, what's some other notable releases that's happening this weekend that we need to look forward to so you know i gotta tell you the thing that's like um number one for me that's that's worth checking out is a movie called dreaming wild okay and this movie is, it's based on a true story about the Emerson brothers, Donnie Emerson and Don. And they were two, uh, two kids. Uh, they recorded uh, sort of a, a pop album in 1979, right? They were 17 and 15, right? So young kids, okay. just great musicians. Album didn't really go anywhere. And uh, they were sort of just went on with their life. And then it got rediscovered in uh, up in, in, in sort of in, in by this uh, Seattle-based label that looks for undiscovered musical gems right and re-releases them like hey this you know this deserves an audience yeah so true story they wrote this article about about what happened uh when these guys sort of had to confront you know their dream right so you have a dream 
you're a kid, you want to be a musician, you put an album out, nothing happens, right? You just go on with your life, right? You know, yeah. you're doing stuff, right? Donnie Emerson has a recording studio. He like records other people's music, right? You know, his brother doesn't even really do music anymore. So it's a great story just sort of about music and about following your dream and what happens if your dream shows up 30 years too late, right? Great cast. Bo Bridges is the dad. Casey Affleck is one of the brothers. Walton Goggins is his other brother. Zoe Deschanel is, uh, is, is the wife of uh, Casey Affleck. I just really dug this, this, this uh, movie. It's just a really cool to see a, like a movie about musicians that you don't know anything about yeah you yeah. know and it's crazy too because this is happening in real life i know a record label off of phoenix called fervor records they mm -hmm. made an entire business model of based off of arizona music and licensing that and now you're hearing like you you'll hear it in movies and television shows like breaking bad you know for creators who want to go deep and get find those hidden gems like this record label has made this a business model and in return have made a certain like musicians who never had the notoriety during their popular run get it finally after decades yeah. and, and then get those fat residual checks as well. So, uh, yeah, that's amazing. And it looks like a fantastic story. Casey Affleck's at it again. I don't recall the last thing I've seen Casey Affleck in. It seemed like he took a little sabbatical. He, he did because there was some issues. I don't know if you guys remember, oh. but there was some accusations of inappropriate behavior and, and mm. sort of misogynistic behavior. So he had to back off a little bit and he's been a little bit in the background, but, um, but you know, he's just a great actor. I mean, he's just an amazing actor and I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying anything about, about what he did right or wrong. I'm yeah. just saying, that's why that's why I think he laid low. I know. I, he's such a great actor. He acts like he's not Lizzo this whole well, time. Well, well, he acts like he's actually the one in the in the Affleck family that got all the acting talent. Just let me just say that out. Oh, <laughs> you know me, I'm, I'm not I'm not a fan of, of the Ben. The I ben know. I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> and I'm with you on uh, half of his projects for sure. Uh, all right. What else you got going on that you're a fan of this weekend here? So uh, there's a there's a new thing that's streaming and in theaters called Corner Office and uh, not like not as good as Office Space. But I got to say, I got a kick out of this film. Uh, it basically is John Hamm and Danny Pudi from Community, who's uh, awesome. Yeah, right? dude, I, love him. I miss me some Danny Pudi. I was just watching Community yesterday, actually, as a nice little throwback treat for myself. And, you know, he's he's been in some roles after Community, but him as Ackman in Community was definitely the breakout role. And I expected a lot more. So. Well, and, you, and I don't know if you know, but uh, they are making a Community movie. You've I heard do. That, right? Yes, oh, I'm right? waiting on that. Yeah, yeah and Donald Glover is going to be a part of it. Yeah. Uh, everyone but Chevy Chase. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> Chevy Chase might show up. You never know. It's a movie. Uh, oh my god, he's such a d bag though to all of them. I mean, they they might do it just to just to be funny about it. But yeah, yeah, so so basically, this is sort of a you know dystopian sort of like you know horrible sort of office space kind of thing where you know you've got all these weird characters and it just it's just sort of fun just because John Hamm always cracks me up. So I just think it's great to see him doing sort of putting things on its end, right? Like, it's like, he's not just this big, sexy guy, right? He's, he's not afraid to be stupid and funny. Think bridesmaids. Yep. Uh, so I got a kick out of this movie and they yeah, it's streaming. So you can watch it at home. Yeah. Where's the streaming at? Uh, it's just on the, oh, on, so you on can the, rent it. Yeah. On the, on the iTunes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And in theaters, if you can find it, but yeah. you know, this definitely looks like one of those kind of, um, indie ish type films, underground type films. It's not mainstream in your face. That would definitely be worth your money if yeah. you go to the theaters to check it out. An enjoyable time. Good date night movie. And again, I'm the kudos to Danny Pudi, uh, who I like uh, I, I'm rooting for that guy yeah. in so many ways. I just think he's so good and hasn't really had that moment yet to uh, blow up. And of course, his BFF in uh, show business, Donald Glover. And, that guy's doing all right for oh, himself. Yeah, so he's, yeah, he's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I should mention too is, you know, uh, the beanie bubble, uh, and weirdo, I don't know if you're if you've heard about this, but I it's did. A, it, it's it's on uh it's on uh Apple TV and it's the, the film, it's a narrative film about beanie babies. And what's sort of yeah. funny about it, it's got an amazing cast. Zach Galifianakis plays uh Ty uh, Ty Warner, who's the guy that um started Beanie Babies. And you've got Elizabeth Banks, and you've got uh, you've got Geraldine. I can't think of her last name right now. She's amazing, uh, and uh, it's just it's just a great cast. And it's about the women in this world and how they really were the the ones that made this phenomenon happen, mm -hmm. the Beanie Baby thing. And I mean, you know, Ty Warner went to you know jail for years for tax evasion. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's 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 pretty amazing to have. I mean, anybody who was around and sort of saw that that thing, that whole that was probably the last time that was going to happen. 
That's right. sort of a, a, a crazy um, pop culture thing that just blew up like that because it was the early days of eBay, early days of the internet. And so basically collectors had to go out to stores to find stuff and that doesn't exist anymore. You, no. know, you sit at home right. and, you and you wait for stuff and it comes to you. So it's a pretty funny film, and actually, it's it's from uh, it's from Imagine, which is you know the the uh, Ron Howard Brian Grazer company. So I'm a little surprised it dropped on Apple. It seems like it would have been a theater movie, but anyway, that that's sort of fun to watch too. You know, I, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple just dropped them a ton of money and just saved them the headache and be like, here you go, you made a profit, and <laughs> yeah. it's good to go. We yeah. need content, and yeah, we're still in the content wars. That's true, uh, and we'll continue that conversation here in a little bit. But another good takeaway on the Beanie by uh, Baby phenomenon is that there's so many people out there with thousands of BB, <laughs> BB babies who thought it, that was their investment for their future. Oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. the bottom fell out. Yeah. I mean, I saw that in the documentary and as a trip too. So yeah. be careful we're, what you collect. We're kind of seeing like a rebirth of that because everyone's collecting those pops. Figures yeah. The, I was going to say the vinyl like, pops. Yeah. So how long before we get a biopic on the pops? Well, yeah, yeah but the pops too, because they're oversaturated as well. And then mm -hmm. people think they're going to be worth money. They're, they're, they're beating babies uh, 2.0 or 3.0 at this point. I was thinking the same with the Pokemon cards mm -hmm. because oh, yeah. post Malone just paid two million dollars yeah. for yeah. a Pokemon card. No, no Magic way. the Gathering. No, Magic, oh, Magic the Gathering. Magic yeah, yeah. the Gathering, oh, yeah, and, it, and there's one card. It's the One Ring. They only made one of them, and so it's like the Lord of the Rings, right? The One Ring. He paid, and and they said the estimate was two million was the value. He paid two point six for. It. Right. Oh yeah. And as Logan Paul has done something similar, I think Magic the Paul, uh, Gathering with a very expensive over a million dollar card as well. So that's uh, <laughs> now the difference there, obviously, is they are one of one. Um, and so, yeah, maybe mm. a little more valuable, but, but you know, it's only worth what somebody will pay for it. Right? That's true. That's true. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have any intrinsic value. So, I mean, you know, it, like what happens if there's some horrible scandal or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And all of a sudden your investment is worth nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. I just think about sports cards. Right. And, you know, you have uh, all these cards and, and, and I, I'm, I'm guilty. I have a bunch of Jordan cards that I've been sitting on for a long time because mm -hmm. yeah. Jordan was my man. Uh, and you know, at some point you're just like, you know, it's only worth it what it's worth to you. Cause if you're not mm -hmm. going to sell it, then, you know, you're not going to, and you're not going to put your kid through college on a sports card. Right. You know? We need to look up how much, how valuable your Jordan cards are though. Do you have a Jordan rookie? <laughs> I don't have a rookie. Of course and I'm you don't. kicking myself. Cause it, at the time when I was buying them, I could have had one for a couple hundred bucks. Oh, um, and I was just like, yeah. I didn't have the money. Let I, me, yeah. let you me know? text my husband because he has a Jordan card and I, it might be a rookie card. Cause he's from that area. Yeah. Oh, right. he probably doesn't, but we'll keep conversation moving on the podcast <laughs> broadcast uh we're also going to reset because we are going to have to do a taste test uh with these obscure sodas that valdez found we're going to break those down in the podcast broadcast before we try enchilada soda and so much more and uh, just keep it right here it's rock 1 2.1 kfma i'm like eh, there's, there's why do i need to anywhere. sell you to stick around <laughs> right. eh, what the fuck? Here. i thought here. we're all friends here <laughs> you, you just trust us trust you're, us. you're not going anywhere yeah <laughs> all right there's so we're gonna get set up do. here on this um like taste test it's gonna be pretty cool uh earlier this morning we got weird with weirdo uh and in case you missed it went a little something like this okay if it may, that was disturbed and beefy can present it's time to get weird with weirdo what kind of weird stories did you come across today weirdo you know just plot twists plot twists what yeah do you mean? so there's this woman growing up she wanted to become a nun because she loved religion okay yeah and then she met francois Oh, dirty, dirty Francois. Uh -huh. Sounds like a smooth name. Right. What happened with this woman when she met Francois? So she was studying to become a nun in Ireland in her 20s mm -hmm. and met Francois. And with that, her plans radically changed. And she ditched religion for another quest. What's that? To help people have better orgasms. Oh, sounds yeah. like Francois had the devil's D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can't resist that, ladies. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so started with her interest in exploring sexuality, which had been forbidden up until that point. Right. Then she discovered cannabis after a running accident <laughs> and found evidence showing how THC could improve sex and repeated orgasms. Oh, nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. And women, I'm assuming. You yeah. know, like, it's it kind of demotivates motivating a little bit uh, for men sometimes mm -hmm. you know yeah i mean it's just hard to recharge you know when you got the munchies and you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you're in right. that video game calling your name? Yeah, yeah. I'm projecting. Yeah. All right, so. All right, so she founded Lavinia, a company that makes cannabis lubricants, and God is still in her life. She just is getting people to say it more often during sex. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me that there's cannabis lubricants, mm -hmm. and is it THC based? Like, so it's kind of like an edible or some sort of body high that you're going to get while using it? Uh, No, just CBD. 
Oh. Yeah. Okay. But well. that relaxes the muscles and, you know, gives a good time. Fancy. So she was going to be a nun, mm-hmm. met Francois, started banging her brains out, mm-hmm. and then started smoking weed. And now her mission uh, is to spread the gospel of sex and weed. Mm-hmm. That's a religion I'd sign up for. Didn't you already sign up for it? Yeah, actually, I'm devout. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got in the world of weird, weirdo? Okay, so with your daughter growing mm-hmm. up, did you ever get like super stressed about her birthday parties? Uh, yes, but real quick, uh, the weird transition. We were just talking about sex and weed, <laughs> and then you just immediately mentioned my daughter. So way to ruin the mood. But <laughs> my bad. Uh, I, I have planned a few birthday parties. Yes. Yeah. So with me, I have a bunch of kids and trying to get the perfect birthday going. But this woman made a huge mistake. Okay, what's that? So she was throwing a Barbie-themed birthday party. As you would. It's very popular right now. And hired a Barbie. Okay. Barbie shows up. Everybody's excited. And then they realize uh, she's a stripper for Uh. her five-year-old's birthday party. (laughs) Oh, she hires stripper Barbie. You know, it's all about empowerment. And, you know, they showcase Barbie models of all shapes and sizes Mm -hmm. and professions. So why, you know, not focus on the exotic dancer Barbie? Good for her. (laughs) It's very open-minded. Yeah. So and it's actually the five-year-old who is now an adult Mm. who outed her mom and said, my parents hired an adult entertainer for my fifth birthday party by accident oh uh, but it seemed like everybody and once they found out all the other adults were like okay at least she didn't strip because the the barbie that was hired was like okay i'll still do my routine but i'll keep my clothes on and then everybody had a good laugh about it afterwards <laughs> so weird though i mean if you're still pole dancing and lap dancing uh in front of five-year-olds i'm sure i mean at that point the barbie should have been like oh huge misunderstanding I, i'm gonna go now yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. i gotta leave right and then, or been like okay well it looks like uh, the birthday party for the five-year-old the mom's gonna be over here mm. and then uh, all the dads follow me into the basement <laughs> it would have been best five-year-old birthday party ever to be honest with you. uh excellent job weirdo that's the world of weird we're gonna hit the reset be back with your f my lice we're giving away tickets for drowning pool and saliva today at eight o'clock and at eight ten all right so two things uh, we're gonna go listen to for today before, before i uh, the get signature back on. heating and cool oh, i didn't mean to do that okay so we got about like a minute before I get back on the air i'm gonna dedicate this single song takeover to jeff for his birthday uh and i want to show you something i got this text yesterday i uh, remember kayla she came in uh and she's gonna come in again talk mm-hmm. about her suspension uh, but remember, well, after the show, I gave her some stickers. Be like, you can use these as pasties. We're looking to do more merch, right? <laughs> Uh-oh. And so we did. Uh-oh. Yeah, like, you know, because we're going to do children. the Hawk Blocker umbrella. We're going to do the right? Pecker Checker sunglasses. <laughs> and then we're also going to do Beefy Presents pasties. <sighs> Hello. <laughs> the, uh, Kayla sent me uh, one of two pictures uh, of this yesterday. Uh, both had the pasties on, unfortunately. This is uh, why you're number one in the ratings right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it was fantastic and i was like i was like kayla and i did this for you rick um i was like kayla do you mind if i post on your stories and she's like it's for you to do whatever you want with and i'm like oh the possibilities <laughs> i took one look at those stickers and i'm like that's like my entire torso <laughs> oh stop being comparative that's why you know like if i did that while watching porn i'd be you know depressed 24 <laughs> 7. <All right, Robert laughs> <2. 1. laughs> let me do our single song takeover here real quick it's going out to jeff og streamer jeff on the podcast broadcast stream his birthday saturday he wanted to hear some helmet with unsung it's a fantastic request so let's do it we're going outside the playlist for your single song takeover helmet unsung on rock one 2.1 kfma keeping the conversation moving youtube.com slash be vegan subscribe bitches <laughs> clear do you still have the sound bite for us doing the single song takeover with the pew pews oh yeah it's in my <laughs> it's in my thing for oh, it's so ridiculous i need to make that as a drop All right. uh yeah <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of actually busy work that I got to do, mm. but I'm not going to get to today because it's Friday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and then real quick, uh, just in case you guys didn't see that, uh, it's this again. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. See, but I sent you pictures of me wearing the pasties and you just deleted them. So. <laughs> I'm not trying to get booted from no, YouTube, no, no, bro. No, he reported to HR. He yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's showcase. Uh, let's look at these sodas real quick before we open them up. Oh, you want to do a weirdo here? Yeah, you're she, she, you're a she, fan she, of white. She, well, she's gonna be the. Uh, she, uh, I'm gonna open the, it. the connoisseur to. Uh, yeah, she's gonna let it breathe for us, and then mm-hmm. uh, yeah. All right, so let's showcase all the different sodas before we uh, uh, open okay. these up. So the first one that Valdez got was this pickled flavored soda. Pickled flavored soda. Because right. you know that's the one thing everybody's been asking for. Yeah, you know what? I like soda, but I like pickles. 
So yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ingredients. Artisan oh. spring water. Well, we'll get there. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, All right. So go go into the next one. Good morning, Todd. Welcome back to the stream. All right. Uh, the next soda is enchilada soda, or how mm -hmm. would you say that here, Valdez? Enchilada. Yeah. Go enchilada. <laughs> I just like the way he says it. Uh, and the third and final one. I'm so excited for this rat bastard root beer. Nice. I love root beer. So with, with that with real bits of rat. I should. <laughs> when I get to the ingredients list, it's a huge possibility. Absolutely. I was not expecting that. That's good. That's yeah. good. So uh, we're going to do a taste test between these three, break down the ingredients to see which one's our favorite. So let's start with the pickle one. Start and pickle. and in a herb, you know, like off the air, this guy <laughs> goes, I'm not doing that. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Like, Jesus yeah, but, but no, Come on now. I've been in the room. Like when when Gary came in and and uh, and we had poor Austin and Cat on yes. that on that uh, meeting food thing and oh my god so I'm just a little nervous that's all I understand and <laughs> you know honestly and I didn't do uh, like we're not drinking I'm bars good. yeah yeah what's up hey man I missed the song of the day and what time it was could you tell me did you call me and ask me that yesterday too no I did not. <laughs> sure about that somebody did all right it's foo fighters it's foo fighters my hero 1225 today with rob nash all right thank you so much bye no problem brother. All right. give me your cup yeah he meant wednesday okay no no wait uh so <laughs> yes i yes uh we did the eating challenge with austin right uh we're not asking you to drink mari's breast milk we're not asking you <laughs> we're not asking you to drink your own urine through a filter straw yeah you know i was around for both of those two i believe yes or, you were or, or in right oh, after since, since yeah. you brought it up shout out to my dad ralph because he's the one who bought these he's like here so you guys don't have to drink pee or booby juice <laughs> like, okay, i mean this man. looks like pee it does. He knows well. He knows well. All right. So, what's take, the ingredients? Take a smell. No, no. Let's pour it in a cup too. Oh, well, why yeah. are you for your cup? Don't be all disgusting. <laughs> Every, no, we're not doing a spit swap here. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. We all, all right. have cups. All right. So, the, give me the ingredients in this pickle okay. juice uh, soda, real quick. All right. Artisan spring water, cane sugar, citric acid, natural flavor, uh, gum, acacia, turmeric for color. I'm gonna make it yellow like piss. Uh, uh, how what? much sugar? Oh. That's a lot. Uh, it's on the other side. 80, 42 grams. <laughs> 42 grams. That is 84% of your daily value, yeah. ladies right. and gentlemen. No. So if, we, if you drank the whole bottle. If you drank the whole bottle. Fair, yeah. Or not. And now if we, okay, so it this is basically, awful. would you buy it or would you not, you know, uh, taste test. So start off with you, uh, weirdo. Oh, would you buy it? Would you not? Pickle juice. I didn't it's have to soda. taste it to say that I wouldn't. Oh, relax. I hate pickle juice. Let's right. try it. It does smell bad. One at a time, Valdez. You're jumping at you. You're jumping a gun. Go, yeah, see, I want to see those faces. Go, go really? Off. really? Is that go, bad? I hate anything with an aftertaste. I <laughs> hate. Oh, you don't like <sighs> the, the, the pickle taste? Stuck this in is your for mouth? my partners because they give me shit for not liking pickle juice. All Pickles. right. Well, All right, Valdez, you, you made a face as well. Did you not enjoy this? Let's see. It tricks you. It's, uh, it's pickle. <laughs> yeah. Holy hell. Yeah, let's see. Well, Rick, are you talking about piss or the soda? <laughs> I think I would have rather tried urine. <laughs> no, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. Um, <laughs> it, it starts as pickle, mm. and it finishes very sugary. Okay, that's there good. Go. Okay. See, I, I tasted it backwards. I tasted the sugar first, Did and you? then it was that aftertaste okay, of the no, pickle. Okay, no. See, I think I would have disliked mm. it more if I had had the pickle aftertaste, but I just have a, a like a lot of sugar in my mouth. Yeah, mm. it looks like you got a dyslexic tongue. All right, let's, let's try this. I mean, right off the bat, oh, it's gross. Because yeah. <laughs> right off the bat, you put it in your mouth, and it's like it's not even the good pickle juice, like the the kosher pickle juice. It's like McDonald's pickle juice. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, sitting yeah. for three days. Yeah, dude. Yeah, not good. And it reminds me because you know I've worked in enough fast food to know you can't trust the shitty pickles. Uh, so yeah, no, I I, I got to yeah, clear I, that I, out. I, I'm mm. a I'm a pass. That's a hard pass all the way through. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you do taste the sugar at the end, but yeah. super gross and, and queasy-ish. Uh, I kind of want to dump it. Well, whatever. All right, so what's our next soda right. that we're going to try here? Enchilada. Oh. Enchilada. I mean, mm. fresh cups for that. No, 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 do the root beer. Because uh, why? Because I don't know. I was just going in order. Yeah, no, no. I, do the root beer second. We'll do the enchilada on the air. Okay. Uh, um, because that's such an odd flavor. And yeah. I'm I, I think I might like the enchilada because I love enchiladas. Is it do we know if that soda is red sauce or green sauce? Uh I can tell you it is <laughs> red because it's got red 40 in it. So I will try it, but I will spit it out. Why? Because you're anti-red 40? 
Red 40 is poison. Well, yeah. When you look at it, I'm not going to get the soap you... box on it, but it's literally the same crap they put in gas. Yeah, and like excess, but everything, well, everything is poison yeah, in everything's excess. Everything's killing you. The, the chair you're sitting in is killing you right now because it's off gassing. As so, I yeah. sit know. next to my baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> get off your high horse. Come on. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, Rick says he bets that the root beer is good. And I bet it's good, too. So what's the ingredients? You said turmeric and a bunch of other shit, right? Well, oh. a, this is a palate cleanser, right? We have to have a good one in between. Yes. The All right. Yeah. Uh, so herbal blend, American, Siberian, and Korean ginseng, jasmine, clove, dong kwai, angelica skull cap, which is mud dog weed, African capsium... Ginkgo biloba, gutu What the hell is that? This is all the wow. ingredients that are in boner pills sold to Circle K. <laughs> right, sure. Is this going to give me a boner? <laughs> God, <laughs> I hope not. Uh, shiitake, which is mushrooms, and sodium benzoate to preserve freshness. That's a, that's a lot of stuff, though. I mean, yeah. the other one was just like pickles and I can't sugar. Eat... Did you get a no, fresh cup? I need a fresh cup. Yeah. All right. I want to marinate some uh, baby backs in that and then mm. smoke them. Hmm. Oh, uh, uh, real quick, uh, while we taste this, what was your song again, uh, Weirdo? Cold? Uh, cold, Stupid Girl. Yeah, 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 gotcha. All right. We, okay, we, it's, it's, got a, it's got a good, it's got a good bouquet. It's got a nice, uh, it's got a nice root beer oh, kind so of Oh, yeah, give me some. I I know I just got you oh, you got me a fresh, fresh cup? cup. That's yeah. good. I like okay. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fresh cup is good, because I was afraid it was going to taste a little pickly. One Weirdo, Fresh Cup. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, bravo. The fact, the fact that Herb's <laughs> laughing so hard at that makes me know 100% that he has seen the video that she's referencing. We're back on the air, Rock 1, 2 by 1, KFMA. Uh, doing an obscure taste test on the podcast broadcast. Ooh. See, what happened was Valdez's dad went to an Ace Hardware and came across some very odd sodas. And so he picked them up for us to try. Uh, initially, we tried the pickle flavored soda, which was a hard pass from all four of us. <laughs> that was across the panel. Yeah, it was like carbonated McDonald's pickle juice. <laughs> Not good. Not plus, good. Plus sugar. Yeah, plus actually, lots of sugar. Actually, I think the carbonation already died. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty flat. Yeah. <laughs> Instantly flat soda. Uh, <laughs> now this one's called what? Rat bastard. Rat yeah. bastard root beer tastes now, like a son of a bee. Okay, it is, but it's root beer, and it has all the ingredients that an over-the-counter boner pill from Circle K would have. <laughs> so uh, this is gonna get weird for me. Yeah, so try it out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's all right. Uh, try it out there, weirdo. What's it, what's it taste like for you? Flat root beer. Flat root beer. Flat I root see beer. bubbles in mine too. This is mm-hmm. odd. Yeah, I, uh, it tastes good, but it tastes like flat root beer. Well, that's not good. It's carbonated with a flat taste. It smells amazing. Yeah. All right. What do you say, Valdez? Oh, I'm all about that. Yeah. <laughs> I want. There I must never be a lot wanted of sugar. to make out with the soda before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the boner talking. All right. What about her? I'm with weirdo. It's flat. Yeah. It's flat. I'm yeah. Try this I, I like Zia root beer, which comes yeah. out of New Mexico. I saw it at Fry's. It's good. Oh, it's weird too because, I mean, you guys aren't wrong. So you the you can feel the carbonation on your tongue, mm-hmm. but it does taste like it's flat. Mm-hmm. So that is an odd little mix there. It's, that rat bastard. I mean, their taglines taste like a son of a bitch, and that's what I want to say. Damn it. Yeah, like a dead <laughs> son of a bitch. Two dollars on this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be good. Fireball whiskey in that. That would bring her back uh, yeah. to life. Well, yeah, it kind of tastes like Fireball, too. There's a little bit of cinnamon in this. Yeah. Um, you know, so, yeah, that's gross, though. So, <laughs> Fireball's gross in itself. Let's yeah, combine please. two things that taste like Fireball. <laughs> Some more, please. Okay, well, I'm Thank actually you. excited to try this next soda, mm-hmm. and that's the enchilada soda. So, let's get right into that. So, the, there's an actual soda out there that's flavored like an enchilada. Show the label again, weirdo, and then break down some of these ingredients. All enchilada right. soda, which straight up has a picture of enchiladas on the label. Mm-hmm. And if you're like, if you ever want to drink your dinner, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> Y'all get your fixings, is what it says. Y'all, oh, well, yeah. first off, I'm out because I know it's not going to be authentic. Right, mm-hmm. you know, you're not gonna get any Mexican. Oh saying, yeah, there's y'all. an old white bald dude with glasses on the, <laughs> so, on the label. All right, uh, carbonated artisan spring water, cane sugar, citric acid, soybean oil, ester gum, caramel right. color. That's yeah, fine, that's so. fine. It's all just a bunch of poison. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. uh, it's basically, I'm predicting it's gonna taste like Nebraska enchiladas, right? So <laughs> nothing that you would get at any of these fine restaurants here in Tucson. It's white people enchiladas turned into a soda. I can't wait to try the KFC chicken soda. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> but it seems like they're moving that way. 
All right, um, weirdo, and then we're going to do the taste test <laughs> and wow. facial expressions here. Let's see what you got. Uh, you try the enchilada soda first as I cleanse my palate. Oh, <laughs> she spit it out. Back in the cup. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time Weirdo has spit Shut something up. out. It's amazing. You gulp so freely, oh. and then this this is too gross. This is, well, ouch. <laughs> uh, hit me in the eye. All right. uh, uh. Well, no, no. You got to be, hold like on. Carbonated green chilies. Okay, okay. See, so, yeah, I, I need you to be verbally descriptive in this. So you say carbonated green chilies, and yeah. uh, that was the no like selling? Like it tasted like orange soda and then green chilies. Oh, that's an odd mix. Orange soda and green chilies. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, white people, they don't know what they're doing with the enchiladas. <laughs> All right, Valdez. I'll go back to the root beer. Yeah, let me get your authentic uh, review here. Because you grew up on enchiladas. It smells enchiladas. like enchiladas. That's it smells amazing. like enchiladas. How, how would you break down that flavor profile? I could almost taste like the corn tortilla and the sauce, and then it goes like straight to just sugar. You mm. you remind me of what? Like, what's her name? Violet Willy Wonka, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's having an everlasting gobstopper. Like, yeah. now I'm having a side of green chilies. Yeah. I'm going to turn into a giant enchilada. Gonna <laughs> yeah. I would eat you so fast, bro. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. Herb, Herb, let's see. It. These are that. white guy enchiladas, and you're the whitest guy I know. So let me know if you like this. <laughs> you said ouch, like, <laughs> like carbonated, like Circle K cheese. <laughs> so oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, just like the stuff you would do, like find on the hot dog roller or something. Mm. I just, um, yeah, no. That's what no. a description. What a no. review <laughs> to, to have Ash. that on the stand next to the enchilada <laughs> sodas, like carbonated Circle K cheese. <laughs> These sodas are flying off the shelves, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's see. Give I was excited about Give this. Me a shot of all three. Let's see what. Okay, hold on. Time. Let me try this too. And I, I stated that if I am a fan of this, I'm going to drink this with enchiladas this weekend. But it doesn't seem like I'll be a fan of it. <laughs> not bad. Oh, you're mental. It's not bad. Well. No, I mean, nothing about it is good. <laughs> that's for sure. It's not pickle juice, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, out of yeah. the three, the pickle juice was absolutely the worst. Um, You know, and, yeah. and recap, pickle juice is like throw up in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> the, the fat bastard or flat bastard. Yeah, flat bastard. We call it flat bastard. <laughs> flat bastard, Tasted yeah. like flat root beer. That was yeah. not good. Yeah. And this enchilada thing is confusing in all fronts. <laughs> oh, let's see what all three tastes like. Oh, you all right. You're, don't projectile vomit all over me, Valdez. It's all I'm asking. That is an orgy of flavors. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not up. even a good one. Of course like not. Everyone's doing their own thing. Dude, an orgy of flavors at an orgy is never good. Well, hold right? on, hold on, hold on. So we got root beer, the pickle flavor soda, and the enchilada. Is this just like having a backyard barbecue at your Theo's? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> all at the same time. All right, we're keeping the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. That was our take test. We got more coming up after this. Yeah. <laughs> She just wanted to bust out her Spanish. Okay, let's, let's be real. Oh. Actually, no, I've, I've been to many parties like that, though, growing up here. Yeah, with the yeah. baby pool in the front with the yes. with the beers. Yes. Like, I don't remember which comedian went on about that, but I'm like, that's accurate for South Tucson. And then uh, Valdez, I don't know what your obsession is with mixing in all these odd flavors. You did this with the hot sauce at the hot sauce tasting, too. And he put together this jar of Black Death that he swears <laughs> to put some shit. And I'm like, you gotta stop doing that, man. That's disgusting. And uh, you think three things that are disgusting together is gonna make some super good? Not really. I don't think that ever happens. Oh, I just burped up the pickle one. <laughs> we need a palate cleanser. Good thing I have this photo on stock. <laughs> ah, ah yes thank you kayla all right earlier this morning <laughs> we uh had our f my life as we usually do in case you missed someone like this did you get caught self-loving by your mom awkward it is awkward did you do something that got you fired from your job i just get stupid it's fun being stupid don't hide this in vain let us laugh at your pain call 600 kfma right away i promise we won't embarrass you because beef vegan presents f my life f my life f my life yes it's time for another edition of your f my life these are unfortunate situations email to me at beef vegan at kfma.com subject line fml but of course if you have an FML life you care to share on the air and you got the guts to do so, you give us a call 600 KFMA. That's 605 362. 
And if we're doing I Agree Your Life is Death, we'll both give you a high five. <laughs> I gave out tickets. But next week, all next week, we're going to be hooking you up with Incubus tickets as we inch closer to that big mm-hmm. show. Incubus, Bad Flower, Paris Jackson, TCC. Ticket information is available at KFMA.com. And your opportunity to win those tickets next week and I think the week after. We're just kind of like marching towards. And I am so stoked about this show. Yes. And honestly, Tucson, you got to show out. We got to pack the TCC arena because if we want big shows in town, they have to be successful. Right. And if they're not, mm, mm. then we're not going to get them. And we did it to ourselves. That's right. All right. Here's our first FLA situation sent to me by Tiffany. Uh, she wrote, today my sex crazed ex wrote me a letter so bad it haunts me. It haunts me that I let a guy with such terrible grammar skills touch my boobs. <laughs> Half my life. Is this relatable here, weirdo? <laughs> Maybe a little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, God. I'm having flashbacks. No, big baby, you broke up with him. It's fine. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, dumb and cute is a combination that many people have. So mm-hmm. I would say big baby as well. All right. Uh, next up, my life email sent to me by James. James said, yesterday I found out that my hearing is average for a 60-year-old. I'm 30. Oh, no. Mm, yeah, it's a mus- musician's plight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel that pain, James. And, you know, I mean, I, I've been rocking like one headphone, right, on my right ear for now over 20 years since I was DJing in the clubs. And it's just a habit that I've had. And what I didn't know is I'm cranking it to 11 in my headphones and I'm blowing out my eardrums. Yeah. So I'm like deaf in one ear. It sucks. Mm-hmm. I can't pick up lower registers because of how many concerts I've been to. Oh, I now wear earplugs. <laughs> uh, the lower registers? Mm-hmm. So you, you don't even hear me talking right now, huh? Because I'm as Barely. low as it gets. <laughs> You're so- so low. <laughs> so low. All right. So F my life for James. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred uh, percent. The good news is they got technology and hearing aids and all that good stuff. So yeah. good luck. All right. Next email sent to me by Amelia. She said, "Last week I discovered that my fiance has been telling everyone else that we're just friends. Yet last night he wanted me to go with him to pick up my engagement ring. I'm supposing the wedding will be a surprise to everyone. What the hell?" I know, isn't that strange? That's super weird. Yeah. I mean, he's still committed, but at the same time, keeping her on the DL. Yeah. I would be very, very weary of A, where the wedding's going to be, and then B, where the honeymoon's going to be. Because if the honeymoon is in his basement, you're never getting out. Right, I was about to say, and see where your body's going to be buried. <laughs> Scary. Very sketch. F my life? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I do kind of feel that pain because my my one of my partners denies our relationship. It's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's complicated <laughs> for you because, you know, you're banging like 17 people. It's oh, Paul. Okay, it's yeah. a cube. It's only four. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I understand that too. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, okay. It sucks to be a secret. So, yeah. F my life for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, next, F my life sent to me by Candy. She said, on Saturday, I was wearing a new tank top that I thought was really cute. I later was talking to an attractive guy and thought he was giggling at me because he thought I was being cute and funny. I then realized he was giggling at the fact that I only shaved one armpit. (laughs) She must grow hair quickly. Yeah. Uh, Is that enough of my life? It's weird. Like, one? One. Yeah, that's all right. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's style. Call that punk rock and be like, yeah, it's it's a eunuch. I'm a eunuch. No, not a eunuch. Oh. That's a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. Unique. Well, no, I'm not saying unique, but I'm definitely not saying unique too. So I guess I messed up on that. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I lived in Flagstaff for years, so I'm used to like dating women with hairy armpits. No mm. big deal, right? Yeah. Uh, and Just then, hair. Yeah, one and be like, okay, you're like half Flagstaff. <laughs> uh, so I said, big baby. Yeah, big uh, baby. Final F my life of the day is a doozy and a great way to end F my life's on a Friday. Rory sent me this. Okay, apparently Rory lives with his mom. Mm. And he said, hey, Beef, on Sunday morning, I had to pee in my cat's litter box just to avoid seeing my mom having sex in the living room on my way to the bathroom. Oh! <laughs> but you know what? You knew not to go into the living room because you definitely heard it, Roy. <laughs> Good for your mom. That's my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Brutal. Yes, I couldn't agree more. That's awesome. And now it's time to change that litter box. <laughs> And there you go. That was your <laughs> FI Life for the day. It's a good wow. one. So, yeah, we enjoyed it. I know. I know. Uh, and Fridays, we usually have a bunch of doozies. That's got to be a big litter box, man. I don't know. <laughs> I know. You fill it up. <laughs> 
I used to fill up jars, um, but that's a whole nother reason. So. <laughs> All right, Howard Hughes. <laughs> yeah, I, Howard Hughes it for a minute. I swear to God, I had a good phase of like six six months. I was Howard Hughes in it. It was very strange. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was just I'm gonna need more details about this like later. Was issues gone. or what? Yeah, no, no. I mean, I had people living in my house, and I don't know. I just had a whatever. I'm a weird person. I had I had a dark a period of time in my 20s. All right, let's get into. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Moving oh, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Change the subject immediately. So I want Herb Strapper to come back. Uh, you know. <laughs> all right. So this video is going viral for all the wrong reasons. So this woman, uh, she's from Florida, and she does like a vlog series on her YouTube page, uh, basically about embroidery. So as boring as it gets. Mm. So something has to spice it up, right? Well, you know, life intervened and really made her uh, channel very exciting very shortly. And I'll show you what happened. Check this out. You do it with trim. It gives you lines where you can put the trim in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the delayed picture yeah. <laughs> right so yeah a car drives into her house while she's recording this she did give oh. a little update here uh, shortly after because immediately look at her. she's looking back and she's like i'm gonna have to press pause <laughs> <laughs> avoid this pattern avoid this house yes oh my God. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so calm uh-huh car's still honking basically being like help your house got in my way <laughs> first let me say nobody was hurt nobody got hurt the woman driving the car was able to get out of the car as soon as she got herself out from under all the airbags she was fine she was walking around she was not uh nothing wrong no injury she was shaken up obviously but beyond that she was totally fine those airbags protected her okay mm -hmm. yeah so and then she got everything back in uh right. order there so and yeah so wow. that of course went viral i think she's in a different room now or i no, mean it's, it's just a different angle yeah different angle yes because you could see like it's just so much better you can see the car uh, a little bit better with her hair up and then yeah, right at first about. i was like did she cut her hair and I, <laughs> right i heard something else and then i turned to oh no she's still talking yeah, about she... it all right so that that was the first video i wanted to show you uh there's and... a reel that popped up for me the other day it was a dog in the front seat and popped the pop the truck out of gear and then like slowly <laughs> crashed into like four cars in an apartment complex parking lot <laughs> nice. and you could see the owner trying to get in on the passenger side to stop it that dog is not gonna get his he's get his guys his permit right now he's not gonna get his license no no yeah. not, not with a, a record like that <laughs> yeah you know that reminds me and speaking of car accidents i saw this is pretty disturbing and if you guys recognize uh who's in this video then i definitely report him to authorities and i'm not necessarily one to say like hey you know snitch uh, <laughs> unless but, money's involved this, this <laughs> they're going to pay you to snitch do it. right <laughs> so this happened in Grant and Ulysses um, and there was a car accident right which happens all the time especially Where? in the summer months Grant and Ulysses am I saying it wrong Euclid. Euclid. Euclid okay Euclid I'm an idiot. We already established this. <laughs> Jesus, you're as bad as your traffic guy. <laughs> I'm about to ask. So, okay. Now, keep in mind, like when you, you've been in situations where you've been in a fender bender and maybe you've been in a situation where you knew it was your fault. So, you know that feeling? You remember that feeling uh, when you cause a car accident? You feel like shit. Mm -hmm. You're embarrassed. You feel upset. You hope you didn't hurt anybody. Right. Those are normal reactions and feelings that you're going to have if you cause an accident. Now, the kid in this video, I feel like he caused this accident. And you could tell, for, even from afar, that he is not happy about causing the accident whatsoever. The way that the people who got hit by his car reacted was 100% bullshit uncalled for. And uh, th basically, they took a situation that was a fender bender, and they added an assault charge to it. This is what TMZ posted yesterday. And again, if you know who did this, then definitely tell someone because this dude deserves to get punished. Watch this. And he's a kid too. Boom. Oh, yeah. Geez, Starts punching dude. him. And I think even more so, I'm upset about it because this kid's driving a Kia Soul as well. That's my soul brother. You know, <laughs> like hey, you don't fuck with my soul brothers. You know what I mean? And you're like the passenger. So I don't care if you didn't have I mean, he insurance. Just walked up and straight clocked him. Yeah, he's like, sorry, he's got his hands up and everything. And he throws a couple cheap Jeez, shots in there. Dude. And the guy's a like, Jesus dude, and, but it doesn't do anything. Just keeps filming and drives by. The two filming and partying. Yeah, and he's almost like crying. And 
Yeah, so that was posted on TMZ Tucson, and you right. know, there, it doesn't. It takes a lot to get me disappointed, and uh, you know, my homies in my community and stuff. That was disappointing. Uh, so you know, and of course, that's the consensus on this as well. You see all the comments on TMZ Tucson being like, "That's just bullshit, man." Because mm -hmm. uh, it sucks for everybody, right. even if you're not insured or the other person's not insured. Yeah, that's great. Right. And I, even if you're angry, if you get hit and you're angry, and yes, when you get hit, you get angry, but. The other person is not celebrating the fact that they hit you. Right. They know that the both of your days are fucked, right? Yeah. Well, and most people like in a car accident, it's it's minor little slip ups or just something was in your peripheral or whatever it may be. Like it's never malicious. No, I know. So we were just showcasing and we're back on Rock One 2.1 KFMA, the video that TMZ Tucson shared of a, a kid who accidentally caused a, a car accident. And then somebody getting out of the car, the person in the other car that got hit, getting out of the car and punching that kid, uh, which is a complete BS. Uh, you could check out that video, TMZ Tucson. And if you know that guy, uh, slap him around a little bit or, you know, <laughs> I'm sure that other people are trying to report that person and, and they'll, he'll have an assault charge or something. Well, but. and make him drink some pickle soda, man. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> with no filter straw. Yeah, I like that. Oh that. man, I was going through all our camping stuff. I didn't realize we have two of those filter straws. Oh yeah, you do. Uh huh. Have you used them yet? No. Valdez, what are you doing next week? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, does that work on vodka? What if we drink it through the straw? <laughs> it goes well, back to potato oil. I mean, that's, yeah, that's essentially you're, what you're talking about is Tito's. They're just using that charcoal um, filter and then just filter that over oh. and over again. Uh huh. That's how they make it smoother uh, and still has the alcohol in there. So, yeah, you can so do forget it. hot sauce. Let's just make Beef Vegan's brand vodka. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's start with these umbrellas and sunglasses first, man. They, uh, we're slacking, and the PCs will be good, too. But, yeah, uh, Nate, our uh, promotion director, he's got to be on it. I know they want to sell merch, and there might be some people out there that want some of this merch, but we want to make some cool stuff. Uh, but selling booze, we're just going to have to do that on the side out of your trunk, Valdez, okay? <laughs> I mean, I do it anyway. So. <laughs> I came across uh, a fun list of PSAs from, like, the 80s and 90s that were geared towards Generation X. And I want to, like, recall your memory on these because uh, they're super funny. And I'm sure you're going to recall some of them. Uh, this, These are the PSAs that tried to save us. An entire generation is your TMI top five, okay? Everyone remembers this one. This is your brain on drugs, mm -hmm. you know, drug free yep. America, which is a man in the kitchen comparing a fried egg uh, and pan to your brain on drugs. What they didn't show is that guy was stoned on weed and then he ate that egg immediately after. <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> All right. So that one, um, uh, Marla Gibbs from the Jeffersons in 227 uh, did a PSA where it says br kids bring more than lunch to school. Basically, Narking out the small business owners <laughs> <laughs> trying to sling, uh, you know, a little bit of fun leave. I don't know. All right. So that one. Um, did you, Herb, you're old enough to remember <laughs> this one possibly. Uh, it was Jesus when he was born. No, I see three PO from Star Wars catching R two D two smoking a cigarette. No, what? yeah, what? this is Google that one. Go down the rabbit hole on YouTube for that. Yeah, there is an actual PSA of C three PO catching the little robot, and it's such a growth. So maybe that's why R two D two wasn't that tall. Uh, smoking a cigarette, and he warned kids about the dangers of smoking, and says it doesn't make them grow up. Ooh, wow. Yes. I'm just I'm sort of blown away that. Lucas would like do that. That seems sort of outside. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Although he just grossly merchandised everything. It so. would be the nerd robot too. Yeah. Like, oh, of course. Really? Where would he inhale? <laughs> I know. I'm let's... looking at images from it. I'm like, I'm confused. Well, all right. Well, let's go look at these images here on the podcast broadcast, keeping that conversation moving. And we'll be back with your beef tip right after this. Also, yeah, and I wanted to get to. Uh, this on the air, but I, I do want to show that and you share your screen with this weirdo. Yeah, but uh, the parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Remember that one? I learned it by watching you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's how you guys bond. Like, yeah, bro down together. <laughs> hey, when I was in high school at one point, there was uh, there was some kids that were like trying to get into their parents safe because that's where all the good pot was. So, it, yeah, it's not a no. My main supplier of weed in high school was my parents. They didn't know it. <laughs> um, you know, but I, I was just, just cutting a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I was the king of pinching hardcore. <laughs> I was doing that for a long time and they were blowing through ounces 
And they're just that like, man, we're smoking like a, a lot of weed. That, that sounds like a bumper sticker. The King of Pinch. Yeah. Be oh, vegan. yeah. <laughs> that, or a T-shirt. That is, that is nice. You don't have to do that nowadays. But here's the odd thing about it. And I, I think I've told this story before. But, uh, you know, um, my parents both, they, they smoked cannabis my entire life. Right. Um, and uh, then they always got it like, you know, heated with me and, and would fight with me over my cannabis use during high school right because i was a minor and stuff but the, it was very hypocritical and i knew this because you know they're like how dare you smoke weed in this house and i couldn't say well i got it from you motherfucker it's your weed <laughs> <laughs> but i smoked weed with my parents for the very first time on the same day but separately and it's kind of a sad story it was the day that my mom moved out of my house right uh and separated from my dad uh earlier that morning as i'm helping my mom uh, move out then once we got a lot of the furniture out she lights up a fucking joint and passes it to me that's like a bonding thing and at this point i'm an adult right uh and then uh i'm 18 years old and then so then she leaves then later on that night no joke later on that night it's just me and my dad at the house now and my dad's like on the computer and stuff and then uh he's sitting and we're talking and then he lights up a joint and passes it to me too right now i couldn't be more furious at the fact that uh we could have as a family <laughs> done this together and probably prevented so much fucking heartache, headache, and bullshit. Mm. Right. And then the fact is the same day that I actually smoke with my parents for the very first time is separate in this kind of hard thing. Obviously it's a lifelong memory. Uh, and it's very odd. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring you down. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could have gotten your parents to smoke weed with you at the same time, they would have never divorced. They'd still be fucking weirdo. <laughs> That's the saddest weed story ever. <laughs> it really is. Sorry. I know. I know. I'm, I'm just sweating. <laughs> No, I don't even know why I celebrate it. There's family's apart, man. <laughs> All right. So you got that. Let me see the yeah. image. Sorry. All right. <laughs> All right. It's a feel good Friday, and I'm just in the whole shit. All right. Yes, we got to watch this. I'll turn it up. <gasps> There's smoke. It kind of paused in my hand. Yeah, Send me the link, ASAP. Yeah, Send my me the link, ASAP. Mm -hmm. Send, Send my, my computer's slow. So. That's right. Email it to me ASAP, and uh, I will put this picture of uh, Kayla's Pacey's aside and uh, <laughs> copy and paste it. I know. I just went to my emails, and I'm like, oh, that's, 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 there's that picture again. Amazing. Nobody Make wants to see smoking RTD2. Come on, man. No, they've already seen. Look, they could scrub back to the part where I showed <laughs> Kayla's boobs, obviously. Obviously. Did she get a hold of you, by the way, Valdez, while she's sending me this? Because next week we want Kayla in studio with her uh, new boss. They're both uh, beautiful and talented uh, tattoo and piercing artists. And Kayla, of course, just did our suspension for the first time. So I want to get the videos and the images to share with you and her experience of uh, suspension, which is a crazy lifestyle uh, and, and hobby that people have. Do you know what suspension is, Herb? No, that they like literally put meat hooks in you. And, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen, yeah, 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 uh -huh. I've seen that. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here is the PSA that Herb Strafford grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, in its entirety, hopefully, with no buffing. Let's go. Artu, where are you? Artu, Artu, yeah, I have news for you, C3PO. He's not smoking cigarettes, bro. <gasps> R2, you're on fire! R2D2, you found a cigarette. Well, I can't think so. Oh because it's very dangerous. It's not mine. I'm holding it for a friend. It's R2D3. I know I don't have one, but humans do. And I think we should set a good example. Well done, R2. Oh, hello. You know smoking is bad for your health. And that sounds like Anthony Daniels, too. So, I mean, he actually mm, did it. Yeah. Smoke. You know, I think back then they didn't have to. Well, I mean, I guess in the Star Wars holiday thing, and Anthony Daniels did not do that one. Uh, Didn't he? Oh, yeah, he probably did. So, yeah. They did. That's funny. It's awesome. Do you really think I This is a little forever. Yeah, insane. I just remember the 80s one where I was like three CPO at a glory hole, and they were doing like AIDS awareness. So like, <laughs> what? No, Rock one two point one. Who's this? <laughs> Yo, can you hear me? Hello. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Who's this? 
What's up? Oh, my name is Adrian. What's up, Adrian? What can we do you for? <laughs> I don't know, man. I was just calling to say hey. All right, nice. All right. Hi. Yeah. Hello. A- Adrian's hey. our people for sure. Hi. Right, well, we, I don't know, we, man. Yeah. I'm just here. We appreciate you, Adrian. Uh, you have a great weekend, yeah, okay, brother? I appreciate brother? you, man. All right. Take it easy. All right. Take it easy, brother. I think we know where R2D2 got his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. I just wanted to say hey. All right. Good enough. I mean, funny if Adrian's the dude from the video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, unfortunately, we're running out of time here on the podcast. Podcast broadcast live on Rock One Two Point One KFMA. Uh, before we get into the beef tip, I'd like to thank everyone for listening. Of course, all the people who won at Herb Stratford, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming in, Valdez. Excellent job today, thank as you. always. Uh, let's get into your beef tip, and we'll talk about longevity. Uh, this is actually a legitimate beef tip. Uh, the best type of exercise to boost your longevity. You mm. just want to live a little longer, which I think is a bonus, and this is good for when you get a little bit uh, into your seventies and whatnot. But uh, you could do all this stuff, strength training exercises and workout with no gym or equipment stuff. Uh, and it takes less than 20 minutes. All right. And if you do this daily, you will increase your longevity and your strength. Starting off with squats. I know you're a big fan of those. Mm-hmm. These help your body with basic everyday activities like getting up from a chair and picking something up off the floor. All right. Static lunges are a thing. Hip bridges, which is fun. It's kind of like air humping uh, <laughs> or like dry humping the air. You know, mm-hmm. you thrust up. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna get you, ghost. It's the best way. <laughs> it's the best way to exercise your house, right? And like exorcism. You're like a ghost being like, oh, this guy's I'm a freak. Out. I'm out. Yeah, I'm haunted <laughs> somewhere else. This guy's not trying to bang me. Uh planks, which those mm-hmm. are very simple, and that's a great sex exercise as well. It'll get you ready. I told this powers um like two years ago, and he has a girlfriend, and it's to maintain his relationship. <laughs> thanks to planks. <laughs> Toot, and, toot. Yeah, and finally, <laughs> uh, push-ups. Push-ups, uh, the, these increase your body uh, strength and improve your endurance and stability. So these five exercises, 20 minutes, if you do them daily, it will increase your longevity. You'll feel a lot better. So mm-hmm. squats, static lunges, hip bridges, planks, and push-ups. Really all you need if you want to continue to live longer and to be able to be mobile around the house. And I'm looking at you, Herb Shafford. And you want to be able to drink pickle juice later. You got you to gotta, you gotta do this stuff. Oh, pick- he's going with the callback. Pickle <laughs> juice is said to have recovery uh, attributes oh. when working go. out. So there That's you go. True. All right. Well, then all those tips, a beef tip, a herb tip, and then weirdos <laughs> tips, which it is cold in here. So, all right. Let's get out of here. I uh, love you guys. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Don't forget to subscribe, youtube.com slash be vegan. Robin Nash is up just next. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be back Monday morning. Till then, drive safe, ride safe, and as always, rock local. Later. When you wish Excellent job, everyone. Thank you. The beef, soon talk will to you soon. come and end to yeah. all your grief. I love my life. But yeah, if so you've been I like your tips. <laughs> <laughs> I will